So if you're a CMO or a C-suite exec and you need to come up with your AI strategy, you know, fresh and cold, there's really kind of four pieces you need to think about. One, you should just know what are your, what are your values? What do you care about, about your data and about your users and about your audience? Um, two is you know, sort of use cases. Um, and which is, what do you want to do with data? Uh, three is how clean is your data? And four is, have you trained your team with it? Um, so just to kind of go into those, those first two, what do you need to do with your data is just, what are the questions where you're trying to make a decision in a meeting, right? Over the last you know month or quarter, uh, what are those things where you say, gosh, I wonder if we should blank or blank, right? And if you had the data, what would you do to make the decision? Um, so the key is you think about through that use case and depending on what it is, that cues you in, you know, so we work with a, an energy company that's uh, trying to help uh, big, bat you know, big companies use batteries to help the grid. Um, and they need to know, you know, at a, a second level, What's the state of charge of these industrial batteries? What's the market price? How would they arbitrage between them? How do you make those decisions? Whereas if you're a streamer, you might just need to know, hey, has a user uh, watched something before? And what's the thing that's most likely for them to watch next, right? So they're different levels. So for the energy company, they're deeply concerned with latency, speed, efficiency, um, and being able to make that decision and send the, the pulse back. For a video streamer, they're way more concerned with the nuances of how has this content related to another piece of content? What's happened when users have seen this have then watched the next one? Have they started it? Have they gotten 10 seconds in? Have they gotten six episodes in? Um, have they hoovered through the entire you know box set of seven seasons? Those are Those are key questions that your team needs to know. And so those kind of key questions are the use cases that help you figure out how to formulate your data. But the next piece is data hygiene. And your data has to be carefully labeled. Um, and this is really making sure that if you have a way you label your lookalike audiences, right? And you call them, say, high value users when you're buying it in programmatic, that has to be the same label you use in your viewing table when you have a list of users and you describe what their um, current persona is, right? And if you're getting data back from YouTube, it has to use the same set of labels that the data coming back from Meta uses so that you're not cleaning things up and missing things in translation. One example that will happen for many, many companies is you have an event called, say, registrations or signups. And on one platform, you know, up until one date, it's conversion one. And on another platform, it's, oh, it's conversion one, but it's actually step three in the funnel. And when you're talking about that and you have these moments of uh, decision-making in a meeting and you're like, oh, well, we have to reconfigure how the data works. We have to mean, oh, in that platform, signups aren't actually signups. They're actually mobile signups. That kind of thing causes confusion among your team. It's the same sort of thing that causes massive confusion among your data and will lead to, you know, garbage in, garbage out um, in terms of outputs. So data hygiene, key thing is just making sure at its most basic, it's think, thinking of yourselves as personal trainers for your data. So everyone in the company is focused on, is our data timely? Is our data labeled correctly? Is it uh, arriving from point A to point B? Does it have the same label in our CRM system as it has in our programmatic system, as it has in our billing system? as it has in our viewing system, right? If these are using different terms, you're not gonna be able to leverage all of your data and your any decisions you make aren't gonna be as well informed or as smart. The last piece is culture. So we talked about data hygiene and how data in system A has to match up with system, you know, CRM has to match up with billing and it's all gotta be consistent, but that's a cultural thing, really. It's about training your team to think of themselves as you know, sort of personal trainers for data. Are they looking at it every week to see if there's data that's mislabeled? Are they making sure that it arrives on time in the right format? Um, are they making sure that all of the pipes are hooked up and used? And then are they looking at it? Are they making predictions about what the data should do? 
Are they getting the systems to make predictions about what that data should do? And then are they watching those predictions and evaluating how effective they are, right? If you're continually having, um, a, say, churn prediction model, and it's staying at the same level of accuracy, then you're probably not improving. There's two more things. One is OPP, other people's products, right? Trust in Google to optimize your search to the best way possible, right? Trust Meta to optimize your programmatic ads, okay? They're often gonna be more effective than you are in trying to find right, the exact right audience. And then embrace the good enough. So we have a, a free trial conversion model that we worked out with a customer and we could never crack higher than like 87% accuracy. Um, but what was key was we could label each user with a score and we found the most um, important thing was this massive like users in the middle where we weren't sure if they were gonna convert, right? We knew 100% some of these people were definitely gonna do it, 100% some weren't. But this murky middle um, was the audience that you could actually try and take action on and actually impact. And so it's okay if you're not a positive whether they're gonna, they're at risk. Whether they're a little at risk or a lot at risk, you can take action on. Other examples of that would be medium mix modeling. You know, it's not scientific to the, the nth degree, but it's incredibly accurate um, in sort of giving you a directional look at how each of your channels combine when they're stacked together. So is it your ultimate CPA? No, but it's real good and it's real close.